Amen. This morning, I, I want to share about divine civilization. Civilization. What is civilization? What is the technology for civilization? Praise God. Um, the basic definition of that is actually uh, refinement of thought, manners, or taste. When you say people are civilized, you are talking about people who have refined thought. The way they think is not the way the barbarians think. Are you with me? There's a way barbarians think. When you say a man is a barbarian, when you look at a man, you say this man is a bushman. Do you understand me? It's, the man is not educated. The man is not... Can you borrow me a slang? Okay, you don't know the slang. Okay, don't worry. Pardon? It's local. Thank you very much, sir. It's unrefined. There's no finesse in the way he handles things. When he wants to collect money from the ATM, you find him struggling, fighting. You look at him and say, ah, sir, take it easy. Sure you understand. The man is just not well packaged. Amen. And so, we evaluate nations based on how refined they are in the way they think. And over years, we have seen nations rise. And every nation has defined a kind of civilization. They've defined and um, led the world to think in a particular way. Glory to God. If you remember the dream of Nebuchadnezzar in the book of Daniel, and when Daniel was explaining the, the hierarchy, or rather the, the, the progression of the nations or the civilizations that will come, each of those nations defined something in the earth that became a template for the years to come. However, having said that, you will realize that even in the New Testament, they spoke about mystery Babylon. Amen. Thousands of years after Babylon has ceased to exist, we are still talking about the impact of Babylon. The educational system you and I were subjected to was taken from Babylon. That civilization is still imparting the way we think today. Because the whole Western thing is premised and based on the way they think. Praise God. And so you find out that, you know, this, but you see, the interesting thing is this, and which I've always said, and that's why I'm not I don't see an European man, an American, as being superior to me. Are you with me? They are not superior to me. You know why they are not superior? They are what they are today, not because they know book more than me. Hallelujah. But because a spirit downloaded a civilization into their heart. Am I making sense here? A what? A spirit. How do I know a spirit was involved? Do you remember when Daniel had to spend 21 days in fasting, seeking the face of God, and the angel came through for him, and the angel said, look, for 21 days, this is the day you made up your mind to seek the face of the Lord and to ask him concerning these matters of the kingdom. He said, God had you in heaven. Many of you don't know that the day you made up your mind to pray, God had you. Please, if anybody told that there is a no in the mind of God, it is not true. Did you hear me? God does not give a no as an answer to prayer. The only thing that will happen is that your prayer will not get to God. Are you make, am I making sense? It will not get to where? God will not hear. He will not even know you prayed. 
But if your prayer got to God, God had it. It's always a yes. Praise God. Am I communicating? But however, for 21 days, even after God answered that prayer, a prince stood and said that prayer will not be answered. So who knows whether the thing waging war against us are princes who will not let our prayers be answered. Not because God did not hear. Glory to God. That prince withstood the angel that was to convey the answer back to, the, to Daniel and withstood it for 21 days, so much so that they had to call for reinforcements. God sent reinforcements and cleared the way. Now, it's instructive to hear what that angel said. It said that the prince of Persia has been judged. Praise God. At that time, in world history, the Persian, the, the Medio Persian Empire ruled the whole world. They ruled the whole world. They were in charge. They were the ones that brought down civilization. They defined civilization. If you are not aligned to Persia, you were not civilized. Praise God. Am I communicating? And so. The Bible said that when they were judged, the, the angel said, now come there, the prince of Greece. Praise God. Now, from the time that prophecy was made to the time of the actual manifestation, it was over 100 years. But in that 100 years, Persia, in their military expansion, was never able to conquer the, the, the city-states of Greece. No matter how much they attacked Greece, they were not able to subdue Greece. They subdued every other nations in the world. Because God said to in Isaiah, said, I gave him to him to do it. I went before him and I subdued nations before him. Praise God. Are, are you with me, church? However, when a man called Alexander the Great rose in the earth, the prince of, Gash, uh, of, of Gracia found in him, found in him a vessel conducive to possess. And when he possessed him, the wisdom by which Alexander subdued nations was amazing. And, you, and they called him Alexander the Great, not realizing that it was actually a prince that was walking through him. When the Bible says it is he who walketh in you, both to think and to will. That's how spirits operate. Praise God. And Alexander brought a lot of innovations to military strategy and so many other things. But when it was the time for him to go, the word of God says his, his uh, kingdom will be divided among four. But said they will, none of them will match up to his glory. And after that, the prince of Rome came. Hallelujah. And then they told us that they will break into ten. It will be clay and iron. Because iron signified the kingdom of Rome. It's clay and iron. It said they will never mix. They are trying to mix, but they will never mix. It says in the days of those kings, God will cover his kingdom and he will destroy them. Praise God. We are moving towards that generation. But what am I trying to say this? That princes define civilizations. Rome, let us go to Ephesians chapter 2. So it's not only thought, manners, or taste. It's, it's the whole garment of human existence. Ephesians 2. Let's take it from verse 1. Ephesians 2 verse 1. Excuse me, let me quickly, all right. I'm, I'm not seeing anything here. Okay, Look, I will use mine. And you at a quicken who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past you walked according to the course of what? Of this world. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children of what? Disobedience. Among whom also 
we all had our conversation. The word conversation there is our lifestyle. The civilizations that defined us was orchestrated and taught by a prince called the prince of the power of the air. So whatever it is, whatever education you have, you were actually taught by a priest and the teaching is designed for one thing, to produce disobedience. You call it civilization. You call it science. You call it, what else do they call it? Fashion. You call it whatever it is you want to call it. You call it enlightenment. We are the people who went to the best university of the world. Yes, you are very knowledgeable, but a prince was responsible for teaching you. And that prince has only one objective. To make you a sound rebel. A rebel that will never obey God. And that is why you cannot carry that kind of mindset into the kingdom of God. It cannot work. That was why in Romans chapter 12, can you go get me, give me Romans chapter 12. Now, these are things you probably, you, you've heard before. I mean, these are not new things to us. Paul therefore had to say this, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you do what? Present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Holy and acceptable to God, which is a reasonable service. You see, I don't know why our language or our, our thought process has not been changed. A prince taught us to live disobediently. If there's any word like that, you just, it's a Bible, it's a, it's a preaching word. It's not, don't write it in my egg. Is that okay? Another spirit must undo that work for us to be re-civilized. Amen. Because every kingdom comes with a civilization. It has its own civilization. It has its own thought patterns. That is the way. I don't know if anybody here among us have tried reading some books. How many of you have tried reading, reading Watchman's book? You've tried it. How easy was it to flow? Sometimes I had a headache. I just could not follow. There's a way this, that his thoughts were stringed. And I think it's the way the Chinese man thinks. That he was just giving me a headache. I, 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 there are some, you know, some people told me when I was in secondary school that um, Nelcon was difficult to understand. There were two kinds of physics books. There was Nelcon and which other one? Eh? Abbott. They said Abbott was easier than Nelcon. And I sat with Abbott for three years. Lo and behold, I was one of the dunces. Is there any word like that? I was all dunce. I didn't understand what I was reading. One day, out of frustration, I picked Nelcon. And I read the first three pages. And the thing just opened up as if the, the, my eyes just opened. Uh -uh. This thing is simple now. I prepared for a jam. In one night. I read, I nearly finished the whole Abbott in one night. But Abbott, uh, uh, Nelcon. Abbott, I was only for three years. <laughs> but Nelcon was for a whole night. I almost finished it. There's a way thoughts are arranged. That when a person speaks, you can know whether he's from this part of the world or he's from this part of the world. Praise God. That is why if an Harvard trained graduate stands and both of you have the same BSc, the chances that they will pick the Harvard guy above you that went to Akumba is very, very high. Even if he has a 2 2 and you have a first class, they will pick him. You know why? The professors that taught him, the way they communicated those thoughts to him, the way his mind is trained to work is higher than the level you will be thinking. Praise God. So you find out that civilizations, every kingdom come with their own civilization. They teach people how to think. You know the reason, one of the reasons why Nigeria is where we are today, there is no identified way of thinking. 
The only thing that binds us together in Nigeria is money. Money does not know if you are Yoruba, Hausa, or Igbo. That is the only thing. But every other thing, there is nothing that binds us together. There is no philosophy. There is nothing. A professor told me, he said, one of the reasons why Nigeria is not growing is that we don't have philosophers. And I was like, really? We have activists. Wale Shoinka is an activist. Um, Falano is an activist. But they are not philosophers. Philosophers change the way you think. Are you with me? In the, in the kingdom you came from, there's a way you were designed to think. There's a way you were taught to think. There's a way you were taught to solve problems. There's a way you are taught to see the whole world. Hallelujah. But it is designed for one thing, disobedience. So Paul said that we were delivered. He said, verse 2, and be not, so Romans now says, for this reason, your most reasonable service, your service is not coming to church and preaching like I'm preaching. Your service is your presentation of your body. Now, the body is not body like body. The body is like all the things that constitute your being must be presented as service. Praise God. Because when he was writing this, this thought was alien to the thought process of the civilization he was living in. Because many of you, when you think like, it is not my father's work, it doesn't concern me, you are thinking like a Gentile. Pastor Bello was one who told me, told me about that. That many of these things are Gentilic. Have you heard about Gentilic? Amen. When you are as a believer, all that is in your head is what shall I eat, what shall I drink, what shall I wear. You are a Gentile. You are what? You are a Gentile. You can, you can, your name can be John. John Solomon Jeremiah. But you are a Gentile. You are not a Zionist. There's a way people of Zion think. Are you with me? Their life is not driven by that philosophy. Praise God. I, I'm not by making sense here. Praise God. Thank you very much. Now, if you, further, if you go further, so he said not just your bodies. He now went on to say, in verse 2, I said, be not conformed to this world. Don't conform. If there is any problem Israel had, it was a problem of conformity. It's a problem of what? Conformity. They were always conforming. It is so, it's, look, it's the, it's the path of least resistance when you conform. You remember, they said to Samuel, we want to be like other nations. Because when they attend meetings, are you with me? And you stand up to introduce yourself. I'm, the, uh, I'm, from, I'm from Palestine. And uh, this is my God. His name is Dragon. You come with your God and Opashe and all the necessary paraphernalia of your God. Amen. And then the man comes from Egypt. He has his own God beside him. And everybody comes with their God to the meeting of the United Nations. And you are coming from Israel and say, I'm, uh, I'm the king of Israel. And they say, where is your God? He's in heaven. And they laugh. It's ridiculous. So they came back home and said, well, we cannot be going for these meetings. We must have our own God that we can show the whole world. We must have a king we can show them. We can have a God we can show them. We must have something visible. Praise God. So they began to do what? Conform. But the one is still true. You cannot conform. You should not conform. Because they want you to conform to their civilization. I was talking with mommy. I said, it is not possible for me to dance to a Christian song sung by an unbeliever. Did you hear what I said? Did you, can I repeat it? An unbeliever picked a church song. The one you just sang. Which one the one you just sang now? Can you imagine this one being sung by a fellow? I don't matter if you don't do it. I said, it's not possible. 
I cannot dance. I cannot even think. I cannot even. I will just look at you and look at you. Ah, I feel sorry for you. You need to be born again. Praise God. I know you are looking at me like I'm a very queer person. That's the problem. I am. I can't dance. Because I have trained myself. I have been taught not to conform. Amen. I've told myself I will not be spring. Even before uh, uh, NDL. Is it NDL? Yes, yes it's okay. In my, during my father's burial ceremony, they came to carry me to dance. They put me, I will not dance. I will not spray. They, they died. My heart was not there. It was my body. They were pushing me. They were pastor dance. Because the only time, the only place I can dance is inside church. And when quiet, you don't see someone that can dance. You see me, I just stand and be looking at you. Because, hey, touch is so me. Amen. Okay. I was not supposed to say that. <laughs> don't look at me. Do your own. Hey, praise God. Because I have made up my mind, I will only worship God with my dance. I have danced enough to Fela, to Bob Marley, and to all those. No more. Not doing anymore. And if you guys will not sing any song that makes sense, I will sit down and be looking at you. Hallelujah. That is it. Because it's a civilization that I have opted to follow. The kingdom of God has its own civilization. The kingdom of God has its own pattern of doing things. The kingdom of God has its own way of solving problems. You must learn it. Now, why is that necessary? Praise God. Amen. Why is that necessary? Are you aware? Can we, can we look at, can we look at um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 7? What many of us are not aware? And I think it's because many of you have not given time to think about this. We all know, I truly believe that now you should have come to an understanding that there is life after this life. I think we are all on the same page on that. Hallelujah. But have you given thought to what that life after will look like? Have you asked yourself, even if I get to heaven, what will I be doing? In this church, I know that we are already aware that we are not going to heaven to go and be singing songs and be dancing reggae. I hope you all know that. You don't know that. I'm telling you, that is not our primary assignment. Glory to God. There is something else that we will be required to do and so much more. Now, look at what Paul said. He said that in the ages to come, there are ages to come. It's not one. When you look at eternity, eternity will be broken down into ages. Glory to God. It will be broken down. There are still ages. On, on limited possibilities are still going to unfold. Things that men have not had. Angels have not even come into in, in, into thinking about it. He said it's still in God's mind that he still wants to unveil. Praise God. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his what? Of his grace. In his kindness towards us through who? Jesus Christ. There are ages to come. God wants to display. God wants to Show off, if you mind if I use that. Are you with me? God wants to lavish the endless possibilities within him on certain people who by reason of the fact that they have changed their orientation and submitted to the values of his kingdom. He wants to so deck them that as they are blessing with one blessing, and you are still saying, ha, ah, God, this one, they are giving you another one. They say, ah, God, I've not recovered from the one. They'll give you another one. Can you imagine going from one level of pleasure to another level of pleasure 
to another level of pleasure, and that pleasure has no end. They will give you some much, you know, give you capacity, you know. Someone was talking about crescendo. There's no crescendo here. Mm -mm. You are going to have endless capacity to receive from God. As God is thinking it, and as you are receiving it, and you are still trying to say, Lord, ah, Father, I want to give you praise. You are still composing song. To bless God, he has dashed you another one. Bah, ha, ha. Lord, let me finish composing this one. Why, why are we saying that? They are dashing you another one. So what, how will you now worship? What is the song you want to now sing? You will now say that this song we sing, um, we thank you, Lord. Will it be insufficient to express the joy that will bubble out of your soul? Amen. You now know why it is important to now worship. Because it, the worship will come effortlessly. It will just... But you see, there is a way everyone will want you to think and to act. Because it will be strange. For example, if you enter a, 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 a community and you are a stranger, you know the way you will behave. Somebody who is familiar with that place will quickly pick you out that you are what? You are a stranger. Imagine you get to heaven and you don't know the throne of God. You see throne, you'll be asking, No, the angels will be like, how did you get here? Did you not read in the Bible about the throne, how they describe the throne? Or you'll see the angel that raised up Jesus and you don't know him. You're asking me, Pastor, I have not seen it. Jesus Christ said, we have not seen the Father. Show us the Father to, it will be sufficient for us. You, say, ah, you have seen me and you still ask him to see the Father. <laughs> you, have seen me, you have seen the Father. Praise God. Those characters have been there in the Bible all along. It is you that you never got yourself acquainted with them. So imagine you enter him and you see the angel. Ah, you were the one that came on that day. Because you have already known him. Praise God. The guy will come around and shake yourself. We have been expecting you. And then you can now start conversing and talking about the exploits of God. Because your mind has been renewed. It will be sad that you get to heaven because your ambition was to be a doorkeeper. That was David's ambition. It shouldn't be your ambition. Because your mind is renewed or ought to have been renewed. You ought to have been recivilized. Your way of thinking should have changed. Paul said that do not be conformed to this world, but be, let that be a what? A renewal of what? Your mind. It is that renewed mind that will be able to... And so, uh, I said this quickly about the will of God. See, the will of God is not usually cast in a straightforward um, jacket, as it were. The will of God, sometimes you may need to discover it. You may need to... to I will allow you the word... You may need to mentally um, engage it and locate what exactly is what, what God is trying to say in that particular instance. You know, there was a time David was going to go to war. His first major conflict as a king, the, the Philistines came together to attack him. And David did not assume that because I'm the one, they just anointed me afresh. I can speak in tongues, hallelujah. I'm a warrior of no mean, no. I've been fighting since the boy that was a small boy too. I'm a big boy now. And now they've confirmed it. I can do whatever I want to do. He did not do that. David sought the face of God. He said, well, how do I confront these people? God said, go engage them. He engaged them and he won that battle. Then those guys regrouped and said, it was because... They fought them in the valley. Their God is the God of the valley. We meet them on the mountain. <laughs> but David did not assume again. He now went again to seek God's face. Said, How do I confront this situation? God says, don't engage them. Wait until you see the movement on the top of the trees. Then you follow that movement. And that's how you're going to attack. Praise God. Church, renewal of mind means that you don't engage the issues of life based on the way the former civilization taught you. If there's anything we must learn from Daniel, Daniel was an expert in the two civilizations. Can I repeat that? Daniel was what? 
was an expert in the two civilizations. He was exposed to the learning of the Chaldeans, the science of the Chaldeans, the, the wisdom of the Chaldeans, everything about the Chaldeans he learned and he was good at them. However, there was another school that man attended. It's called the school of the spirit. So that when he stood before the king, they found him to be ten times wiser than all the magicians in the realm. Questions the magicians could not break down. By the reason of the fact that he has been exposed to the civilization of heaven, he provided the king answers that the king said, this is true. Praise God. I've had testimonies of people who were facing tornadoes. Is it tornadoes or hurricane? I don't know which of them. Those tornadoes, those things that go around in America, and they usually go in a straight line. They go in a straight line. And not, they turn not for any. And anything they meet, they destroy it. And this was coming towards this, the home of these Christians, and they could not run. And for one reason or another, they just had the inspiration, they stood, and they said, we rebuke you, turn away. And that thing got close to them and made an angunite turn and change direction. You will ask me, was it ordinary wind that was inside that thing? Even the robots know that that thing is not wind, that there's a spirit inside. Everything is not science. Are you with me? Don't let them, it's not science. <laughs> you will think it's science. Try to jump on a ship and put fire under you, a bomb, and lit it, and see whether you will not blow up. You think it's ordinary high that those guys are going to the moon? It's not ordinary high. But we that have a reality of it must learn the way of the spirit. Because it is the spirit that teaches us how to behave, how to think, how to live in this present world. Not fashioning ourselves after the civilization of the world in which we live in. Because the thought I was trying to tell us that when you step into eternity and you step into that actual kingdom, you must be already enlightened and educated about that, the way that world works. That is the reason that you have been taken through this particular training exercise to prepare you for the ages to come. That you are, not a, you are not a novice. And don't forget, as I bring my teaching and whatever is a message to a close, you will remember when Jesus Christ was, was talking. Jesus Christ in the book of Revelation. You know that when he was talking about the promises he made to the churches. In one of the promises to the churches, he said to him that overcometh, I will give him permission to sit with me and to rule with me. Hallelujah. Listen to me. Do you know why you have opportunity to settle conflicts among brethren? It's to prepare you for that world. Because the Bible says you will stand and you will judge angels. So if you cannot judge simple matters between brethren, you are not getting yourself ready for that time. And the Bible has given us the how to go about those kind of judge, judgment. He said, because, you cannot judge because when you see people, you see, ah, this guy gives you, give me, do me. I cannot talk against because, because of you, do me. No. If you are like that, then you are not going to be qualified to handle the responsibilities that is going to come to you. You must be a person that have learned the, the, the distinction of justice. You must understand it. Different manifestations of the spirit, but it was primarily, the Bible said the foundation of this throne is what? Righteousness and what? Judgment. So if you don't have good sense of judgment, I am afraid that you are not ready for that civilization. You must learn judgment. Now, as I bring my teaching to a close, you know that we have been saying this for a long time, that the educational system of Nigeria needs to change. But I'm afraid that the leaders of Nigeria do not have the, the, the boldness to try it. They don't have the boldness to try it. 
and they will not change it. You will have to educate yourself. Just like Daniel educated himself, he was good in the instruction of the Chaldeans. He was also good in the way of the Spirit. He knew the two. He was good. That is why you have the opportunity of going to the university. Be good in what you are doing, but be good in the realm of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Conform to the civilization that we represent so that we can live as we ought to live. I want to bow our heads to pray. There's so much, so much this kingdom of God offers us. So much it offers us. So much. This kingdom is a civilization. That kingdom ruleth over all. Many of us we need to pray, Lord of heaven, I, 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 I need to help me that I will be convinced. I am, some of you are not convinced. Paul said to Timothy that anything that you are still not clear about, the Lord will convince you. Can you ask the Lord, I need confirmation, I need clarity over this matter. I need to be settled, I need to be clear about this matter. You cannot go and be, and be joining yourself to another civilization. The civilization that will outlive every civilization, the civilization of God. The one that Jesus raised will outlive every other civilization. That is the one you must buy into. But you cannot come in with your baggages. You can't come with those old ones. You must discard it. You must discard this, that civilization. Oh, Bahili Makradiste, Rido Vos Supri Kavadoshte, Zebri Lagos Supri Kavadavashte.